I want an apology from you. I want it to be from the gut. So I'm gonna have to cut you open so that you can pour it out to me. He's working himself to death, overthinking, exhausted. Can I kill him? Here you see him being driven by some unidentified people. We don't know whether they're male or female at this point, but he's being driven to a safe haven. Or is he driven to his death? He has no idea at this point. It's almost like a boat out on an island. The police are all around him. There's no place to hide. His head is throbbing. He had a bayonet wound where he was poked in the hip by a fan that was standing outside. A little small child, not much older than nine years old. Thought he was going to be positive situation it didn't happen so now he's walking hurt bleed most people don't know anything about it it was amazing that the kid identified who he was because he has a soft spot for children and the elderly it worked when he got poked in the hip he realized now this world is dangerous no safe haven, no place to be, and no wife. Lost. A man who once had it all. Now stuck in his own mental. What do I do? Where do I go? Who do I be? So he came up with one solution. Become a God stalker. to turn around corners. Perspiration, fear, jealousy, hurt. His flesh is acting up. He's going crazy. He's peeking around corners. Not sure if anybody is chasing him. What's next? I feel like the whole world is collapsing in on him.
I got a, um, I'm been a, probably in a transition process. I moved, like I said, I moved down to Georgia from Ohio. And I stay in a area outside of the Atlanta um, residency. And so now I'm, I'm thankful because the position that I was blessed with and granted to make it to this point, um, it might be over. So I'm gonna take a vacation and come back and I'm gonna go to Ohio and spend some time with family members and loved ones and things like that. And then I'll uh, assess the situation. But what I gotta do for sure is, uh, is, is stay positive and um, stay prayerful and keep the spirit of God moving inside my life. You guys see that rainbow? When I move my finger, the rainbow is behind my finger. See it? Pretty cool. So a rainbow is symbolic to God still is in control. Sun is still shining. Um, down here is in December. And it's 60-something degrees, maybe almost 70. It's a really nice day as usual. So I made the transition for this right here. My back and my neck bothers me from playing college football. It was like being in a car crash every play. So now the warm weather helps my body and my back and neck. So that's one thing I did to save myself. And now it's just a, a focus on concentrating to get to the next level. Um, working on this investing, the timing on all of it is, is going to be great. But um, I say from a ridiculous mind state of just being totally focused and zoned in that God is in control and God runs things. So I can have dialogue and conversation with anybody. I need you if I can get your email addresses, send y'all some of the stuff that I'm writing. It's um, um, No Pillow in War, which is attached to my God Stalker series, which I would love to share with you guys. I'm trying to develop a, a, a fan base, a following, and uh, try to go big with it and make it go big in the entrepreneur world to make something happen out of nothing. That's the only way it's gonna go. So in the infamous words of Polo Meinstein, you work 40 for them and work 80 for you. And that's what a week looks like. So I feel accomplished. I did a tour at where I work at some treacherous hours, 3.30 in the morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon, knowing that it was a dead end to the spot. I try to collect as many dollars as I can so that I can cover what I need to cover. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make that or not, but I got to keep grinding. So the focus is there. The concentration is here and God lives forever. So this is one of my first sessions or second session that I want to do called How to Be Motel Granite. King is trying to hide and get away. All of this 
trying to defend his wife's honor is driving him crazy. Jealousy, taking him to another level, trying to hide in plain sight. It's really causing a problem for him. All of these men lusting for his wife, and he feel like there's nothing else he can do to take him out. That's the only solution he seems to have. Eleven. Now he's on the run. Eleven F. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Run from the world. Yeah. The run from himself. We need to back up a little bit. But most of all, on the run from God. Yeah. He knows it's not right what he's doing. But his flesh and his lust he can't stop him. All day, a lot of women want him. He is so focused, stuck on being with his wife. She doesn't want him. So he's in a world of hurt. So the question becomes, if you was hurt beyond comprehension, what would you do? Looking for him. Looking for the men that desire his wife. If he finds them, he's gonna kill them. This has caused him to have smoke come out of his body. Anger has built up so much that his resentment for the world and their attempt to take his wife away from him has caused him to smoke out of his body. This is anger leaving. It will come out the top of his scalp when his brain was open. Now he's contemplating the thoughts of, can I eliminate every single man in the world that lust, desire, dreams about, fantasizes, or has a vision of sexually being with my wife? 